dear colleagues, uh, let us start with our program. Sorry for uh, this three minute late because we have some technical problems here. Uh, and it is my pleasure to open this last part of our program, last section. Uh, and our first speaker is uh, Professor Theodor Atanaskovic. So the title of his talk is on the constitutive equation of heat conduction with fractional derivatives. Please, Professor Atanaskovic. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank organizers for inviting me to do this lecture to um, that on a symposium dedicated to the memory of Professor Arthur Kajic. I'm going to talk about one problem where fractional derivatives appear, and that's the problem of heat conduction. Specifically, I will talk about uh, heat conduction or a positive equation of heat conduction with fractional derivatives of real and complex form. Uh, the uh, plan of my lecture is the following. First, of, uh, I will tell something about heat conduction equation, then I will talk specifically about classical heat conduction equation. Next, I will talk about Cataneo type equation. And then, before I go to generalize heat conduction equation, I will talk about how is this the inequality uh, that is the restrictions on positive equations that are imposed by second law of thermodynamics. Uh, that is fifth part of my uh, lecture. And at the end, I will give an example, uh, a sketch of an example of generalized heat conduction equation. Uh, First, the, the, everybody knows how classical Fourier heat production law uh, reads. Uh, it says that heat flux is pro proportional to the gradient of temperature, coefficient of proportionality is heat production coefficient, and it turns out that it is positive quantity, and here is minus sign. This minus sign simply says the heat flows from temperature for, to the point of higher temperature to the point of lower temperature. That means if this vector is positive uh, and that is the gradient of temperature, so heat flows against gradient of temperature from higher temperature to the lower And when this equation uh, is combined with uh, First of all, I talk generalization of, of this equation. The simple generalization is to add yet another term with a constant that is proportional to mixed derivative of uh, uh, temperature. That is uh, derivative with respect to time and respect to space. Uh, this uh, generalization is motivated, motivated by, by uh, kinetic theory of gases, and uh, this second term corresponds to case when energy of molecule, kinetic energy, consists of translational and rotational conditions. Note that this introduces higher order term. And then comes famous Cataneo equation. Cataneo equation is here uh, as a two tool. Here we have, like in Fourier law, uh, heat flux factor is proportional to negative gradient of temperature, but on the uh, side of uh, on the left hand side, it's a pair time derivative of heat flux factor. It's called thermal inertia. That means uh, when 
We have great data of temperature. He does not uh, fall immediately. It gets some inertia. And that is this um, uh, sigma dispositive quantity. That's how Catarell uh, uh, proposed. When we combine, for example, this Catarell equation with the equation of energy, which I will uh, not talk right now, then we, we get the well known Kelvin equation. That is a equation that describes heat conduction but contains certain derivatives with respect to time. And why people are generalizing it? People are generalizing it because many of those proposed equations do not satisfy certain laws than the For example, very famous Catabell equation, this equation does not guarantee that heat falls from the temperature point of higher temperature to the wall. This one allows opposite, which is not known in physics. That from lower temperature uh, uh, and uh, uh, heat as an energy goes to higher temperature. Nobody knows. But this equation allows. And so, although it's very far, it has some real problems with it. Why this equation is fine? It is fine because it has finite speed of propagation of disturbances. That means if we have very long uh, rod and put, for example, iron here. This equation uh, number two leads to finite speed of the speed of propagation of uh, thermal uh, uh, thermal wave. Why? That one leads to infinite speed. So that means uh, if one uh, has a rod and put here iron, immediately at the point that is in infinity, we will get temperature of something else. It is uh, physically not, uh, not accepted. And that's why Fourier law is uh, why people are looking at other models. By the way, uh, the same equation with infinite uh, speed of propagation also in sociology describe propagation of gossip. So it's uh, very nice to know if you say something immediately because you do it. Uh, okay. And look, the uh, equation, this Catanero equation, could be written in this interval form. As you see, uh, uh, this equation is equivalent to equation three, and we have heat proof, flux vector is convolution of exponential function with its grade. And that led to many uh, uh, interesting uh, proposals. One is that we can any function here q with convolution and say, well, that would represent general heat of action. OK, uh, we talked uh, about this type of generalization, but using fractional calculus. Next, I, I just, uh, because I am uh, this is energy equation. It says uh, change of energy. Uh, here we consider all, only rigid, rigid conductors. So there are no uh, deformation of materials when he goes through. Uh, is uh, internal energy changes as a divergence of complete part. So here is only one dimensional case of that. That's this function. So now just to talk about uh, fractional derivatives in heat production problems. I start with the well-known uh, relation that we have many times. Here is left Riemann Newton fractional derivative. As you see, that's convolution between this function and gradient uh, of heat flux factor in our case. Uh, more general form would be the one pro proposed by, uh, actually, by, by Professor Filipovic and myself a uh, long time ago uh, to uh, treat distributed order fractional derivatives. So, Gradient of temperature is integral over order of derivative with some weight function of a uh, uh, even fraction. 
When one case TQ as a dealer distribution, then we get uh, actually when you take dealer one minus gamma, we get classical heat production. And now uh, comes the problem: what are restrictions on those different positive equations that uh, second order thermodynamics imposes? The problem is uh, very simple. What second law says uh, in words that whatever we do, we are on losing side. We are always on losing side. Whenever we make a cycle, we lose. And then, uh, in uh, terms of quantities that, uh, uh, here introduced, that means that. The relative with respect to X of heat, uh, heat flux vector divided by temperature, and here is uh, generation of heat within the body divided by temperature. This actually entropy. And some people say that this is uh, as, as the zero means that entropy is increased. So, anyway, that this must be satisfied for any side. And that means we start from some point and we turn back. Of course, there is no problem. What constitutes side? When we can say that we start for something, uh, with something and return uh, again to this point, then we find side. In order to define cycle, we might we have to know quantities that define say, say variables. And that's very difficult. And then, in this context, temperature is uh, the defined state. After some thermodynamics, which I will uh, uh, leave, we get that this equation, you have, must be satisfied for any heat flux vector uh, integral from zero to d, where d is r. And t, temperature at the beginning and and at the end is the same, that is the same state, that is cycle. Okay, and now we apply uh, 11 to equation given here. That's uh, what we propose in this paper. We propose that uh, heat flux is proportional to gradient of temperature, but has some derivative like Cataneo type, fractional derivative and heat derivative of uh, complex order. This uh, the bar of Q, and this bar of Q is defined as a here in 30, that is derivative of Riemann Julian derivative of alpha plus i beta alpha and beta here i is imaginary unit plus alpha minus i beta uh, conjugate number, and here are a constant that we keep homogeneous as far as the masses are concerned. So, uh, we are introducing this quantity into heat production equation. If you do some, uh, if you do some dimensional quantities, so our constitutive equation proposed in this paper is 14. Now, we want to see what are restrictions that set the world thermodynamics to, uh, on. Uh, I have, so I have plenty, uh, a few minutes only. And the, uh, here I introduce, uh, actually it could be written this way, uh, convolutionally uh, gradient, and here is uh, some kernel. This kernel is given here in, in this form. And then I define uh, by taking uh, here absolute value uh, uh, equation 17 in order to find the radius. So I have to define this parameter values of tau. And when I do this and apply here and so I get 80. And now uh, the idea is to use Stockton Schwarz theorem. So uh, actually uh, I will have uh, F, which is inversion of this term in convolution with gradient as a uh, like that we hit flux factor, many special cases are obtained. And now here is the beginning of application of the theorem. 
I have here this, and then I will put this integral into integral in the final cycle. Here are some uh, quantities that I delete, and here is the main result. Q max factor given by 4t satisfies uh, uh, second law thermodynamics if coefficients satisfy the thermodynamics. That is our real result. So it's not really a relation between coefficients, a real part of fraction derivative and the magnitude of part, and A and B constant equation. So this must be satisfied in order that if Fox vector in the form proposed here satisfies second law. That's our major uh, central result. And since my time is uh, almost now, uh, we prove it using Bokken Fats theorem. And uh, the only thing that one should be uh, should take care uh, Bokken Fats theorem uh, holds for functions that belong to D, that is, one part we support with uh, smooth functions. And our Q and gradient are not such functions. So we approximate it. There is uh, uh, here how we uh, do it. I will omit this. Uh, we use the fact that, that uh, uh, different uh, small functions that proper support uh, the very one functions to be approximated with uh, uh, small functions and use it in, in, in this integral. I will omit this uh, proof. And now, now, example, this is example that I want, that simple one. That is, this is energy equation, constitutive equation, initial and boundary condition. We want to uh, see what happens with such an equation. Uh, here is, uh, we use uh, Laplace transform technique. And just one more point, uh, point and I will finish, and this point is the following. In this uh, analysis, the following question arises, which is simple one, but often uh, one doesn't think of it. We know uh, when we have some system of direction, we apply uh, a plus transform solve for uh, transform of solution and then do reverse. And we get real function with energy is here. But uh, imagine this question. We have an analytic function of proper set. And we say, okay, this Laplace transform of Sarkin, then inverse Laplace transform of an arbitrary function of compass uh, variable is uh, real. That's the question that we have to answer. And uh, here is uh, this given by that very interesting answer. Our uh, method satisfies this condition that just here is how inversion is done, and I will uh, not. not uh, do details. I will just here is some regularity of the solution. We use uh, uh, we use uh, actually we prove that solution is smooth away from x equal to zero. But uh, the point I want to uh, just say. Yes, well, I think I could stop here also because of my times. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, please, is there any question in my chat? Or? No. 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 Uh, for me, it's interesting, and this is the way how we cooperate. I mean, you see, first of all, Adonats insisted on that uh, mechanical interpretation, and uh, I mentioned that he was not here, he was in Belgrade at some meeting. Uh, this morning, uh, Balzeco gave some uh, mathematical observation with the rational calculus and mechanical interpretation, and I thought that actually this, this inequality uh, gives us uh, conditions which should be satisfied by the equation. And uh, for, uh, what is uh, impressive to me is that these conditions which follow from the second law of mechanics 
make us in a situation that we can solve the equation. So that it becomes some, some and because you have a coefficient, so I want to say about condition, and then you get some uh, a priori condition for, on them, and then by using them, you can solve equations. So this is yeah, the best. The point is that this equation could be solved for, for Q. It's not clear. But conditions of second law guarantee that 14 gas solutions Q in terms of value. Yes. So this is actually, in we need to solve it for uh, concrete problems. Yes. Okay, so thank you very much once again. Uh, now, now we will have a presentation to our platform. Uh, uh, um, Professor Parmar will give a lecture on operators on functional integrals and derivatives on of the PQ extended Bessel functions. So, do you hear me, Mr. Parmar? Yeah. Good afternoon. Yeah. You, uh, good afternoon. So, please. Uh, you give you, you reach. No, no, no. Okay, so please start. Okay. Uh, first of all, I will thank to the organizing committee, Professor Steven Filipovic, chairperson, Danny Jela, Rester, Nendad, Tiofanov, and Bill Janov, Nedil, Jock, secretary of the conference, also the organization institute. Myself, Dr. Rakesh Kumar Parmar. I am from Bikaner Technical University from India. The present talk is devoted to the study of PQ extended basal function and the PQ extended modified basal function of the first kind of order nu by making use of two additional parameters in the integrand. Also, Certain similar process for the PQ extended stub function and the modified stub functions are also presented. Some formulas for SIGO's hypergeometric fractional integral and differential operators involving PQ extended basal function in terms of PQ extended generalized hypergeometric geometric functions are presented. Corresponding assertions for the classical Riemann Lively and early cover fractional integral and differential operators are deduced. Throughout in this talk, the standard notations and Z C denotes the set of positive integers, negative integers, and complex numbers. The definition of the generalized hypergeometric function with R numerator and S denominator parameters given by the series representation equation number one, where N denotes the Pokember symbol and the series converges for all Z belongs to complex number if R less than is equal to S and it is divergent for all Z not equal to zero when R greater than S plus one, unless at least one numerator parameter is a negative integer, in which case one is a polynomial. Finally, if R is equal to S plus one, the series converges on the unit circle modulus Z is equal to one when real part of all the summations of the denominator parameter minus all the summation of the numerator parameters greater, th greater than zero. The special cases are Gaussian hypergeometric function 2F1 for R is equal to 2 and S is equal to 1 and the confluence confluent hypergeometric function 1F1 for R is equal to S is equal to 1, which is given by the series representations 2 and 3. Here, if in this series, representation. We use the straightforward transformation, which these Pokember ratio of the, the Pokember symbols can be written in form of the beta function. And here we replace, here we replace Bn by Cn that using by the transformation here and here. In 1994, Chaudhary et al. defined the following P extended beta integral as given in the equation number four. And he studied various properties and obtained certain connections with McDonald, error, and Whittaker functions. Further, more interesting properties and various connections with higher transcendental functions are investigated by Miller. 
clearly for p is equal to 0 this equation 4 reduces to the classical definition of Euler's beta integral in 2004 Chaudhary replaced this beta function by p extended beta function in definition of Gauss's hypergeometric function and confluent hypergeometric function and obtained p Gauss's hypergeometric and the q p commerce confluent hypergeometric functions which is given by equation number six and seven it is interesting to note that if we put p is equal to zero and p and p is equal to zero in six and seven these equations reduces to the usual classical definition of Gaussian hypergeometric function and the confluent hypergeometric function. They investigated these functions with various properties, including differentiation formulas, Mellin transforms, transformation formulas, recurrence relations, summation formulas, asymptotic formulas, and certain interesting connection with some well-known higher transcendental functions. Recently, Choi et al. introduced further extension of these P extended beta function, P extended Gaussian hypergeometric, and the P extended Kummer's confluent hypergeometric functions, which is given by the equation number 8, 9, 10. They studied several properties, integral representations, differentiation formulas, Mellin transforms, recurrence relations, and summation formulas. Here is also interesting to note that if we put P is equal to 0 and Q is equal to 0 in 8, 9, and 10, these equations reduces to the usual classical definitions of beta function, hypergeometric function, and confluent hypergeometric functions. A unified approach. More recently, various extensions of the Euler's function of the first kind or beta function have been considered. The unified approach to a class of these generalized variations can be described by considering the following integral form. Here, ht is a suitable function and 1f1 stands for the confluent function. If we specify ht in this integral, if we specify in this integral, if we specify ht, we cover a whole spectrum of extended beta function, which are thoroughly presented in the reference in number 16. If we set a is equal to b and ht is equal to minus p by t minus q upon 1 minus t under the given condition, we arrive at the so-called pq extended beta function, which is recently considered by Choi et al. The well-documented further specifications for all these p extended and q extended beta functions are given in the references. The familiar Bessel functions and the modified Bessel functions of the first kind of order nu possesses the von Lommel formula and the result by Bessel both in the power series form written as in the form of beta function. Here see the in the form of beta function. Inspired by the our recent extensions of the Euler's beta, Gauss's hypergeometric and confluent hypergeometric functions and other PQ extended higher transcendental hypergeometric type functions in diverse areas of mathematical, physical, engineering, statistical science, we investigate here PQ extended basal function, modified basal function, true function, and modified true function and various other properties among integral representation, bounding inequalities, Mellin transform, complete monotonicity, Turan type inequality, associated non-homogeneous difference equations are also presented. In terms of the extended beta function defined by 11, we present the PQ extended basal function and the PQ extended modular function of the first kind of order nu in the series form represented by 12 and 13. Here, Basal function is represented by that in terms of the beta function. If we put p is equal to q is equal to 0, this equation number 12 and 13 reduces to the classical definition of the basal functions and modified basal function. This research was, was this research work was jointly done with B. Janko Masirevic and Tibor K. Pogani. A set of Integral representations for these extended functions are derived in the theorem 1 and is given by 14 and 15. And again, it is interesting to note that if we put p is equal to 0 and q is equal to 0 in 14 and 15, we obtain definitions, integral representations of the classical definition of basal and modified basal function. 
the proof is very simple here if we put take the definition of extended beta function in the series representation of the special functions and resulting in the resulting integral if we use series representation of cosine functions we immediately get the result of basal functions integral representation of the basal function further we have evaluated bounding inequalities of these special uh, these extended basal pq extended basal functions and modified basal functions which is evaluated by the integral representation of the modified uh, integral representation of the pq extended basal functions and by the maximum condition of this we immediately obtain theorem number 2 further the these basal the familiar basal functions and the modified basal functions of the first kind of order new are expressible in terms of the hypergeometric functions 0f1 by in this form here immediately occurs the question about the transforming the pq extended basal function and modified basal functions into the adequate pq extended generalized hypergeometric functions so we define a series in the form of 19 by reformulating in the same way the quotient of the pokemper symbols into pq extended beta terms and under the under the given conditions the special case of this series the special case of this series if we take k is equal to r is equal to s is equal to s plus 1 is equal to 1 and a1 is equal to a alpha1 is equal to b gamma1 is equal to c becomes the already known pq extended Gaussian hypergeometric function. Now we will show the links to the PQ extended generalized form by some modest simplification in the definition of the PQ extended basal function. We obtain the series expressions in terms of PQ extended basal functions in the form of this. Now using the definition of PQ extended generalized hypergeometric function in this function, this function immediately reduces. in terms of the generalized hypergeometric function 1f2 it is interesting to note that if we put p is equal to q is equal to 0 this series represents reduces to the classical definition of the basal function a similar form of the modified also we have evaluated here the melin transform also the uh, as usual the double melin transform is given by the equation number 24 21 now the melin transform of this modified this extended basal function is given in the theorem 1 and it is important to note that the resulting is given in classical definition of the hypergeometric function where beta rs we denotes the beta function you had if we use the definition of the melin transform in the series representation of the basal functions the double melin transform using then evaluating and by some little simplification we arrived the arrived at the our result theorem number 3 after systematic examination of the pq extended basal functions it is natural to switch to the basal type other functions which can be studied in resembling way the obvious candidates for this process is the stroop function which has been we point out that the later function l nu plays the same role with the h nu as i nu z is associated with the basal functions these functions are expressible in terms of beta functions and with the aid of the pq extended beta function the series definition of the pq extended stroke function of order nu reads by 22 and 23 the related main results follows by the same lines of theorem 1 so the proof here is omitted and the similarly we have obtained the integral representation of the modified stir function stir function and the modified stir function of order new so in a similar way we have evaluated the uh, we can evaluate the bounding inequalities for the stir function and the modified stir functions also hypergeometric link for these functions is given by theorem number Six. Further, we have evaluated 
the melinta double melin transform of these functions and it all it is important to note that the double melin transform of stub functions pq extended stub function is given in, in the terms of the generalized hypergeometric function 1f2 which is classical generalized hypergeometric function in 1f2 a differential equation is obtained also in the terms uh, here given in the theorem sum number 7 and it is presented here by the equation number 24. We have studied here the complete monotonicity properties, log convexity, and Turan type inequalities. Here we have defined the normalized variant of this modified basal function, and it is given by the 25, which set satisfy the Turan type inequalities, which is presented here by 26 and 27. Proof is simply uh, similar and is uh, evaluated by the definition of the completely monotonicity function. Now we give some psychos fractional, some fractional formulas for these functions. We first recall here psychos fractional integral and differential operators involving the hypergeometric function to, to f1 and it is given by the equation number 28 and 29 and five psychos fractional differential operators which are given by 30 and 31 if we put beta is equal to minus alpha in these operators 28 29 30 and 31 yields the familiar riemann lively fractional integrals and derivatives and it is presented here by 32 and 33 34 and 35 fractional differential operators are 34 35 if we put beta is equal to 0 these operators reduces to the early covert fractional integral and derivatives here we present here by 36 37 38 and 39 a detailed account of the origin of the various generalized fractional integral differential operators includes as special cases of these operators and others and their properties and applications of fractional calculus is currently being explored rather extensively can be found in the book of the Kriyakova. A survey paper is also of Kriyakova is given here. We here give the some power functions formula or image formulas for these left-sided integral for operators, Saigo's operators, riemann lively operator, and for the early cover operator. A similar power function formula for the right-sided integral operator, Saigo's operators, riemann lively operator, and early cover operator. Power function or image formula for the Saigo's differential operator, riemann lively differential operator, early cover differential operator, and right-sided Riemann uh, Saigo's differential operator, Riemann Lively differential operator, and early Cobol operator. Now we will give the first main results for the fractional integration formula for the modified our uh, PQ extended basal functions. Under the given conditions, the following Saigo's hypergeometric fractional integral of the PQ extended basal functions is given by in terms of PQ extended generalized hypergeometric function, and here it is given in the equation number 52. First, for to, uh, we will give the proof of this theorem. First, we apply the definition of the Bessel function and using equation number 28 of, uh, uh, of operator, uh, equation number 28 of Saigo's operator and equation and equation 40 power function formula and changing the order and integration and here we use the power function formulas of saigo's operator and we get the resulting uh, result resulting equation 53 now here if we use the duplication formulas for the pokemon symbols and using the extended definition of the pq extended hypergeometric function we arrive at theorem number 9 and of the results 52 given in the equation number 50 Again, if we put beta is equal to minus alpha, these theorem number 9 reduces to the 
Riemann Lively fractional integration and if and which is here presented by 54 and if we put beta is equal to 0 these results reduces to the early covert fractional integral here presented by 55. Again if we use right sided fractional psychos fractional integration for if we, if we, for use and we get the result for the similar results for the right sided fractional integration and it is presented here by 56. A proof is similar to the right uh, left sided psychos hypergeometric function. Again, if we put beta is equal to uh, minus alpha, results reduces to the Riemann Lively fractional integration here presented by 58. And if we put right sided, if we put beta is equal to 0, the these results reduces to the early covert fractional integration here presented by equation number 15. Now we evaluate the left sided psychos fractional differentiation formulas for the modified special functions. A similar process for the psychos hypergeometric fractional differentiation here we give by equation number 16. And proof is similar to the here left side if we put beta is equal to minus alpha these results reduces to the riemann lively fractional differentiation and it is presented here by 62 and if we put beta is equal to 0 the results reduces to the left sided early cover fractional integration if we again similarly the if we use fractional differentiation formula for the right sided we here we uh, obtain the result as in equation number 64 and similarly proof for similar lines the proof and also if we put beta is equal to minus alpha these results results to the riemann lively fractional operator differential operator and if we put beta is equal to zero these results reduces to the early cobalt fractional differentiation formula these are the references thank you very much for your attention thank you so Please, if there is uh, any comment or a question, if not, we have to proceed further. Thank you very much for answering. Thank that. you very much. Now, I would like to ask Professor Thibault Pogan, Pogan to give us a lecture on product of vessel functions and related summations. Please, Professor Pogan. Thank you. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, I then share my my content. <clears throat> First of all, greetings to all participants and uh, everyone there in the Novi Sad and the others are online, so my greetings to them all as well. Uh, I intend to say a few words about Arpa Tokachi, uh, but uh, Professor Kiriakova was uh, too fast, uh, showing two uh, photos I uh, have somehow in uh, um, my uh, gallery. The first one is uh, from the right to the left, of course, Arpa Tokac and myself. We are laughing here in Sofia in the garden of the Mathematical Institute uh, on a TMSF conference. And also you can see on the left uh, lower corner uh, the hands of the chairman, Professor Pilipovic, who is drinking coffee. If you don't believe me, you can ask him, is it he or not? But he cannot deny that because of you can see here there is a forensic evidence uh, that uh, he, his uh, conference badge uh, is there and his name and surname are uh, evidently there. So it is one of my uh, favorite uh, photographs in, uh, since I think that Professor Filipovic was uh, uh, very happy in that moment. We are all there. It was nice weather and it was nice conference. I don't know what uh, we are uh, talking about, but it should be something uh, uh, very nice. The next uh, uh, 
uh, uh, picture is also uh, one of my favorites in the, uh, since uh, <clears throat> uh, Peja Raiko, which is also between uh, Arpad and myself. And uh, it was one of the first time uh, in Sofia and the last time when I met him there, Arpad uh, Takachi. And uh, because of both of uh, us, are coming uh, from uh, Vojvodina region. Uh, we find a common language, which is our mother tongue, Hungarian. And uh, I just remember that it was uh, very fastly when we became uh, very good buddies, since uh, Arpad with uh, his wife Jurdic are going to buy some things in a shopping center. And I accidentally was there so Georgica is just uh, buying goods and I don't know, some memorabilia and we just sitting down and uh, talking about socializing, about everything. I like him uh, sense of humor very much. So uh, uh, it is very nice to be uh, a participant of uh, his uh, <clears throat> uh, conference which is definitely a, a good choice in that time to remember a nice uh, uh, mathematician and a nice human, human being. I think it's uh, now time to proceed with some mathematics I prepared to uh, share with you. Uh, this time I am interested together with uh, Dragan Ayankov Mashirevich uh how can we present in uh, some in it uh some form a product of two modified Bessel functions why uh, we are interested uh, by uh, that question uh there are many formulas uh, in uh, formula collections like uh, abramovich stegan grachstein rizik Erdélyi and uh, three other uh, collaborators in Bateman program, uh, Jadel Luk, Magnus and Oberhettinger, and the uh, famous Prudnikov, Brichkov, Marichev uh, five tom uh, formula collections. But <clears throat> we find some new expressions. Uh, we are interested also in the integral form uh, for. Uh, modified Bessel functions product, but when the orders of modified Bessel functions are not equal and the arguments as well are different. Finally, we are hardly interested in uh, new applications and forms and integral expressions for Neumann, Kaptein, Schleumirchon or Dini series of the second type. The second type means that uh, <clears throat> the building blocks are uh, a product of at least two uh, input functions, this time of the same kind. So, the integral representation result. Uh, this result is actually published in the last year in uh, MDPI uh, publication named Mathematics. And uh, there are also some product formula uh, for uh, Bessel functions of the first kind, J. But uh, now uh, we just completed that, uh, na that our uh, result in uh, uh, with some summation results. And uh, the first of uh, th that kind formula we just uh, picked up from the famous Watson monograph. That is, you can see, it is a product of two Bessel modified Bessel functions with different arguments. It is nothing else than the integral of a modified Bessel function where the arguments are just added. Mu plus nu are uh, now the new uh, order of uh, that uh, integrand function. Now, when we are going uh, with our uh, establishing our uh, new uh, result, we uh, just take an integral form of modified Bessel function, 
multiply with another one and get a double integral. Uh, what can we to do with this? <clears throat> we just transform the double integral and uh, introduce uh, the Chebyshev T polynomial or the Chebyshev polynomial of the first kind, which is actually a polynomial of that form you can see here. And uh, all our, our uh, <clears throat> citations are coming from uh, some older classical formula collections. This time that is uh, presented in uh, Abramovic and Stegan, for example but you can find everywhere uh, that formula. So our uh, formula is the form uh, following. You can see it is uh, under number four. Uh, in, in, the, in the integrand, we have a cosine function. The integration uh, domain is from zero to P. Then uh, there is a Chebyshev polynomial with a, a strange argument and again a uh, modified Bessel function of the first kind and uh, when you can see what w theta is uh, i am going forward now you can see here what is x y and what we have that is heavily connected the so-called uh, additional formula from Graf, Gegenbauer, and uh, Neumann. But uh, the classics, Graf and Gegenbauer, uh, picked up the triangle AOB, and uh, Dragon and myself observe that we can do in uh, other way when we just uh, uh, concentrate to the complementary triangle A, O, uh, B prime. So that is uh, 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 differences that I am going back. The difference is that uh, W, the modulus of uh, the modulus of uh, W theta is containing a plus sign and the uh, older uh, formula, uh, which is completely in uh, of other uh, expression given by uh, classics, uh, is with minus. It's of course uh, completely logical since it is not the same triangle. A sketch of the proof is that we just transform uh, an integral inside of uh, the curly brackets in three and uh, with some suitable transformations get that does uh, nothing else that then a uh, linear combination of two integrals one is even the second is uh, odd in integrand so uh, one is disappearing vanishing completely and we just get what we want that is uh, uh, the matter of uh, our proof now we just take uh, the following uh, things uh, in the uh, premier plan that is mu minus nu are one two or three you can see all the time that uh, i1 i2 and i3 are uh, now in integrands and uh, you can see also that there are some uh, indices which are equal to uh, the difference of the orders of the input modified Bessel functions. Now the discussion was uh, what can we to do and is it possible to extend our result not for integer order uh, cases? Is it possible to give some more general results? But we uh, were not uh, successful in that. So it could be a, a nice question to <clears throat> uh, consider uh, some nice uh, procedure for extending uh, for extending uh, our approach. Uh, also, is it possible to take a Chebyshev polynomial 
when uh, it is of general order, so it's the Chebyshev polynomial is now actually a Chebyshev function. What uh, uh, would be the consequences? We also don't, also don't know what is inside and behind that question. Finally, we can uh, present a modified Bessel function uh, in terms of uh, a, a differential operator, uh, which is an argument of the Chebyshev pol polynomial. You can see it, what we get, and it is a uh, other form of the same integral. And uh, finally, what can we do with uh, the Neumann, Kaptein, Schlömer, Dini series, uh, Fourier Bessel series, uh, with that new integral form? No, uh, now uh, we uh, just uh, um, pose some uh, nice purpose of our earlier results to uh, apply that integral form in Neumann series summation of the second kind. As I have mentioned earlier, you have here second kind Neumann, uh, Neumann second type Neumann series because of two modified Bessel functions are in the summons. Uh, rho, sigma, a, b are uh, actually real numbers, but there are uh, some restrictions upon that, some constraint which is uh, mainly connected to integer uh, indices in, uh, of special kind. Uh, we consider earlier uh, similar questions in our uh, recent monograph with ba uh, Baric Arpad and uh, Dragan Ayankov and myself. And uh, uh, there we get some integral uh, form of this kind series. But uh, in that uh, considerations, that study, we just uh, consider special alpha k uh, coefficients in seven. So, our tool will be uh, applied to uh, the next n upper indices n, n, lower indices a minus a. You can see how they are connected now. Uh, uh, when n and a are uh, integers, x and y are, of, of course, different, not necessarily equal. And uh, we apply the Titchmarsh uh, summation formula, which is nothing else than the Poisson formula's uh, generalization, uh, an up-to-date uh, uh, variant of the Poisson uh, summation formula. We uh, just take in uh, that uh, goal uh, Fourier cosine tra transforms given in eight, and. Uh, here is the Titmarsh version. You have on the left-hand side a series and the right-hand side a uh, uh, finite sum and an integral. Uh, when the uh, integral of Ft is an improper uh, Riemann integral, then it is a more interesting, more simpler uh, expression. No integral is now here uh, expressed finally. The Poisson formula is also presented with uh, Fourier cosine transform. Our uh, next result is uh, the theorem four. You can see now what is inside. N is uh, an upper index of the su sum, it, which is an infinite one. Uh, N is, uh, and A together all are, uh, integer numbers, and you uh, just have to uh, linear uh, combination. In the, uh, in the second uh, line, there is nothing else that a finite sum of uh, product of Chebyshev uh, polynomial and the same order modified by self function. Now, we just have to discuss something and say a few words about uh, that formula. The formula is uh, coming 
from Neumann, Lommel, Heine, Graf, and so on. But uh, uh, my comment is the arguments are uh, different, and there is as well uh, a picture shown uh, earlier. Uh, Z a big one and Z a small one and the uh, in latex uh, sense say war P uh, that is uh, the distance between the points A and B in complex plane uh, are inside but the on the left hand side you have uh, an infinite sum no knowing that uh, something like that uh, are shown, uh, were shown by Beltrami and also in Watson uh, in some uh, other uh, writing, you can see uh, uh, what is our uh, next question. What uh, we uh, have to do with the phi uh, angle, when the angle phi is zero, then uh, the left hand side is an alternating uh, series uh, with different uh, orders, uh, modified Bessel functions, and uh, different arguments. But in that uh, uh, case, uh, phi is an angle in the triangle, and you have not no triangle uh, uh, then, and everything is collapsing. So, Rudnikov. Bridgecombe and Marichev give a similar form, formula to our, but now also it is an alternating series. Uh, and you can see that it is also a finite sum, not uh, an infinite one. The, redu re the reduction is, is def uh, definitely known, but A is now uh, zero, so the orders NK, NK are the same, but we have different orders and different arguments. Uh, finally, we just uh, pose the open problem. How can we extend our method to get also a result uh, which would be a counterpart of uh, Prudnikov uh, result here? See, the most interesting uh, result is uh, by a, a German uh, electro engineer given uh, Alexander Vasilyev. Uh, who is of Russian origins, and uh, uh, he is uh, just giving some uh, uh, similar result. And uh, we transform uh, his sum into because of his considering Bessel functions, uh, not modified Bessel functions. Uh, so putting instead of Z and W, I, X, I, Y, V, what is the connection between Vasilyev and our result? Uh, thank you very much for your attention. That's. So, please, if you have some remark or question. Chat, no. No, chat question. So, Okay, thank you very much once again for so organizing. Thank you. Now uh, we will have some uh, change, a little change. Uh, actually, uh, Professor Raiko is, is traveling back from Norway to Serbia. He was blocked in, in Norway for uh, four months, uh, and this is the first flight he can use to come back and he's in this moment in the plane and so we, we all, although we have his presentation we need some time to to present it and because of that uh, i ask uh, dr milos yakunjic uh, who is the last speaker according to schedule uh, to give a lecture on, on non-linear stochastic functional heat equation with variable thermal conductivity and multiplicative noise. Please, Dr. Ndrić. So, 
this talk is based on drawing work with the nearby activity. And actually, it is an extension of our some previous works. So, uh, this time, we consider fractional heat equation in the stochastic environment. So, you can see in this uh, Hoshi problem, uh, function f is, uh, uh, represents the deterministic source, and uh, sigma p is. Uh, uh, is a stochastic source. So uh, function P will be choose from some certain general stochastic process, which will be defined later. Uh, and also, as you can see, uh, this is uh, an equation with uh, variable, variable thermal conductivity. Uh, regarding the the fractional case for uh, fractional derivative, we choose uh, unit derivative. And uh, as, as it is usual, these, these derivatives are, are, are defined on uh, first, first we define on some, uh, on, the, on the space of functions with uh, compact support. And then, and then uh, we know that uh, this space is, is the densest subset of uh, some subordinate space, so we, uh, we can extend this definition to, to this uh, space. Also, combining uh, the left and the right uh, unit derivative, we get uh, uh, the risk derivative which is more important which is more important from the viewpoint of applications uh, because it allows the modeling from both sides of the domain. Uh, as I already said, uh, this is this is an equation with uh, variable coefficients. Uh, so uh, in general uh, these equations are uh, can be solved by using some uh, numerical methods. And the contrast of that, here we use, uh, we use uh, an operator approach, especially in the combo, combo theory. Now I'm going to describe in, in very, very briefly uh, our formal procedure. Namely, uh, instead of the original problem, uh, we consider the corresponding approximate problem with the same initial data as uh, uh, since uh, differential operators are unbounded, here uh, we must transform it in, into bounded operators. So we use we use well known uh, the process of uh, regularization with uh, multiplying by uh, with um, uh, multiplier. And of course, in, in this setup of our procedure, uh, we must uh, provide that uh, the corresponding operator, operator uh, uh, approximate operator, be called with the original operator, and also the, the solution we get uh, must be must be associated in some sense uh, with with the solution of. Uh, of the uh, original problem. So in order to get this association, uh, we must uh, impose some growth conditions for coefficients. Uh, and more details about this procedure can be seen in this, in, the, in our paper, in this paper. Uh, and now I'm going to very briefly, quickly uh, discuss some of the general function space from which uh, we choose uh, solution, initial data, some general space functions, and, and etc. Uh, some of them, some of these spaces are well known, and some, some of them uh, we introduced in order to solve the original problem. 
So as uh, it is usual in on both theory, uh, the space for modern functions is defined by using uh, it is the space of functions that uh, grow uh, not faster than some power of epsilon uh, together with uh, their derivatives in the same manner uh, we define the space of negligible functions uh, but now uh, this is it is the space uh, of functions which grow not faster than every every power of epsilon and uh, the gradual uh, in the space of modular functions Uh, no. uh, the space of negligible functions, functions is an idea of uh, the space of modular functions, so we can define the factor algebra, and uh, this is the this is the space from which uh, we choose uh, solutions of initial, initial data, and uh, it is it is a very similar space, but now it is defined on the on the space of uh, on the subway space and the previous one is defined on the h2 infinity space it is the space of the functions uh, which is bounded together with the derivatives and it is it is usually set up uh, in the, in the, from both theory and now this is this is uh, the uh, stochastic part uh, this is the first definition we introduced uh, in order to, to solve uh, the original problem. And from the, this space, uh, we choose uh, general stochastic process B appearing in the original problem. And the second definition, from the second definition, uh, we choose uh, initial notation. And of course, uh, regarding to Bombor theory, uh, from the, this uh, space, we choose uh, general uniform continuous solution operators. Uh, also, the operator that, that approximates the origin uh, dimension operator it also, is also general operator. And as I said, this is a usual setup for uh, both theory. So, uh, so I will skip this part and start with uh, the, the, the main result. The main result is concerning about uh, existence and uniqueness of uh, originate problem. So here we can see that uh, initial beta Q and uh, stochastic process P, we choose from previously defined uh, generalized uh, stochastic spaces. And of course, uh, before, uh, because we use um, uniform continuous semi group operators, uh, Operators A tilde must be bound, must be bounded. So this is the reason why we why we performed this regularization here. And the, the result, the result we obtained, uh, the solution belongs to the previously defined general general function spaces. Which is which is also a combo. So this is this is all uh, in uh, combo set of here. Uh, of course, uh, no. This is yes. Of course, we proved, as, as I mentioned, we proved that uh, original operator A. And the corresponding approximate operator tilde are associated, of course, uh, uh, imposing some uh, 
grow emissions. And the same conclusion is valid for uh, for the solution. First, we we must uh, assume that uh, exists a legitimate problem. The, the, we must assume that the problem of uh, the original problem has the solution, and then uh, obtain solution B uh, is is uh, also associated as as in the previous case. And at the end. We consider some generalizations. Does it work? Okay. Uh, as I said, we, cons we, we consider some generalization. So here, uh, the value of the panel of coefficients depends on the group. So it is, uh, it is a more strong uh, result. And what, what we prove is. Again, is the is, is the result about the existence of solution. Also, the result about associated of uh, operators originate and approximate, and it remains to prove it remains to prove um, that uh, these solutions are associated. From the original and the corresponding approximate one. And that will be solved. So, please, if you have some question or remark. I would like to ask you a question. Oh. If you consider such kind of, so uh, instead of, so you can have a, an infinitesimal generator and then um, transfer this infinitesimal generator to a net of in, in such generators. Uh, did you consider, uh, if you make perturbation, how small this perturbation should be that you get the same uh, net of Uniform semi groups. You mean uh, in the case of operators? And yes, yes, yes. Because, for example, you have A epsilon and A tilde epsilon, and then you can look difference between them with respect to epsilon. Can you, I mean, this is a, for me, interesting question. I don't know, maybe you didn't know. So, for me, it's always interesting how this perturbation should be, how small it should be. It should be neg negligible, for example, uh, so that you get actually the same result in the end. Uh, uh, do you mean the case when uh, that operator depends on solution U or the previous? Or the previous uh, in, in principle, if you just take a, a generator of, of uh, infinitesimal generator. Okay, uh, I mean, this is just a question. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, because for me, this is always interesting question. Because uh, even for for classical uh, semi groups, you, you can always think in that way. How uh, because we know if we have same uh, infinitesimal generators, then uh, or they uh, their difference can be controlled. Then also semi groups can be controlled. This is my uh, question about control of semi groups to the control of infinitesimal generators. So. I mean, this is just an idea for a future work. So, nothing more. Okay, so thank you very much for us again. Uh, now, now uh, I think that our colleague, uh, our secretary, Bilena Nedenko, uh, will try to, to present this. Uh, this uh, so, who will comment? Yes, you have also. Professor Ivory's presentation, and he recorded his talk. So, 
uh, I will try uh, to show you uh, Thank this you. material. Thank you. Hopefully, we will hear it. Is it possible? Thank you. 
Okay, so I think we can stop because uh, uh, I'm not so sure. We, we are. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, sound was not quite uh, good and it stopped in this moment and probably we heard the main idea so the, of this talk. It's uh, really. Uh, we are sorry that uh, Professor Raiko is is not with us or on, some, on a platform uh, to join us uh, through the video. Uh, so uh, let me just finish this conference. Uh, before uh, finishing the conference, I will give a word to our colleague, Judica Takachi, Professor Takachi, and she will say something about this conference devoted to her husband. Please, Thank you. Thank you. Ovaj, kome da se zahvali. Ali neće, mislim, neće... Da, ne imam. Ok. Ne znam. Ovdje imate, pretpostavljam da vidite, da je suportic. Znači, odavde. Ja vidite, vidite. To se nikola ne ima do projekata da ne zaboravi. Bugarska akademija, to znači, i ne ima do projekata, to kako su za bilateralni projekat. Bilo. Evo, ovdje. Ne mogu da ga, ako ga smanjim. Ne, dobro, dobro. Dear colleagues, dear friends, I'm really very grateful and very honored that this conference is organized and it is not just organized, but in fact very well prepared and very well finished. Uh, the talks were very interesting, but first of all, I would like to thank to the organizers to Professor Stevan, academician Professor Stevan Filipovic, to Professor Nana Teofanov, to Professor Daniela Cirić Reiter, to Professor Biljana Nedejko, and to Bojan Milicevic. Really, they did very, very hard work too to make this conference successful. In fact, this is first conference, this is first, I think, online conference, and I think it is very successful. For me, really, it was, uh, a little bit how to say 
I was on and I was present all the time and I cannot say I was enjoying but it was some special time for me. I would like to thank to the Serbian Academy of Science uh, who supported the organization, the, our Department of Mathematics and Informatics, a Mathematical Institute for Belgrade, Bulgarian Academy of Science, and the Bilotev Project, and Anastres, who, who supported this conference. So the lectures were very interesting and just, and just uh, how to say, well prepared for this occasion. And thank you very much. Oh. Thank you. Dear Tisa, you were a happy woman. You had a wonderful husband. And so this was also uh, something which we have here is son, uh, upper son. So I think that he also enjoyed in this conference. Uh, this is the uh, what we had to do for our colleague, whom we like all of us. So, uh, dear participants, thank you very much. Uh, you have uh, our uh, presentation of conference. Uh, probably you will get some new information about pro pro uh, some uh, publication which can appear after this conference as uh, uh, Professor Kiriakova announced. Actually, this is related to fractional calculus, but in principle, I think that this was uh, not so much important for us. This was important that we succeed to organize conference here uh, parallelly in Novi Sad and with you uh, uh, in many countries all over the world, let me say, from India, from uh, Europe, uh, of, of course. Uh, most of you are. So uh, this is really a, a very, very nice time for us. And uh, it seems, uh, let me say, maybe that uh, here we had just around 10 people or less or more than 10, but our colleagues uh, at Norisat University, at our department, they we know they follow the conference, so somehow our group is uh, uh, who follow this conference is more than uh, 20 people. Th more than 20 people is from outside. Uh, I heard that uh, Bidana told me that uh, actually a uh, big, uh, a great number of, of, of people follow this uh, conference as a friends of Arpa Takachi. Uh, so somehow. Uh, this conference was uh, very successful. So, thank you very much to all of you once again, and let, uh, let me finish this conference. Thank you.